So I've been hearing from a lot of flat earthers that lights in the sky cannot tell us the shape of the ground we live on. It's very strange, but I haven't heard this argument from a single glober. Now, I must say, it is a little weird to hear this from flat earthers considering what they have been saying for years. The midnight sun is a phenomenon experienced by observers north of the Arctic Circle during summer solstice, where the sun can be seen circling over and around 360 degrees without ever setting. Depending how far north the observer is, the sun can be seen for several days or weeks, rising and falling as usual, but never fully setting beyond the horizon. And for two weeks, Edward, I did not sleep. I was trying to find proof after proof, and what I found is, Anything that would prove the Earth is a globe, the globe science community lies about. For example, the 24-hour sun in Antarctica doesn't work on a flat Earth. Now, something has changed the tune of flat Earthers to where they are now saying the opposite of what they've been saying all along. Recently, a wealthy globe Earth proponent named Will Duffy launched a campaign dubbed the final experiment, which he claims will finally settle the globe versus flat earth debate forever. The results of this experiment are allegedly so conclusive that once conducted and completed, all flat earthers will be forced to concede and admit defeat. So what is Will's brilliant idea? What is his ingenious experiment to finally silence all globe skepticism? Invite 12 flat earth YouTubers and 12 globe earth YouTubers to Antarctica in December to see if there's a midnight sun. In other words, the final experiment is not an experiment, and not even a demonstration, but merely an observation. In typical globe defender straw man fashion, Will is conflating a celestial observation with our terrestrial foundation. He's claiming that the motion of a light in the sky overhead somehow gives proof of the shape of the ground underfoot. Shouldn't he be putting all of his resources, all of his efforts into, into staying out of jail and paying his lawyer rather than sending some guys to Antarctica to, to look up at the sky to see a light that isn't going to prove anything, right? So the, the other thing is proving the, the, the sky, um, the light in the sky, um, go, if it goes around. Now, we know as flat earthers that the sun does not circle around. We've had, it's not, and also the final experiment. That is an obnoxious title. It's not a final experiment. It's not even an experiment. I think we all know what caused this sudden change, which is the final experiment and the possibility that we will see a 24 hour sun in Antarctica next month. Now I took my kids to a fast food restaurant the other day. And while we were standing in line, I noticed a disco ball on the ceiling. And this got me thinking, by the way, try to guess what fast food restaurant we were at and let me know in the comments. First person to get it right. I will pin your comment. Now I was looking at the movement of the lights on the ceiling and it was very clear what shape was causing these lights on the ceiling. Meaning if I did not know what shape was causing these moving lights on the ceiling, I could study the lights and correctly determine what shape the object actually was. I would not need to ever see the object, the disco ball, and I could determine that it was a ball based solely by the lights on the ceiling. And I could even determine that the ball was rotating and which direction it was rotating all based on the lights on the ceiling. Now, if you are tempted to argue that I know it's a disco ball because I've seen a disco ball before, this is actually not true at all. I mean, what if it was a disco shark or a disco mushroom or even a disco sun? Or what if it was a disco Darth Vader? The reality is 
that the movement of the lights on the ceiling tell us it's a ball. One light in the center is not moving at all on the ceiling or barely moving. The other lights are moving in a circle. And as the lights get further and further away from the center light, which is not moving, they appear to be moving faster. It's clearly a sphere creating these lights. So lights on the ceiling can tell you something about the shape of what is creating them. But this is beside the point. This just got me thinking. And I started to realize that for years, flat earthers have said that if an airplane could be flown over Antarctica, that would prove the Earth is a globe. If NASA, the world's governments, militaries, media, academia, and or anyone else involved in maintaining the legitimacy of the globe concept truly wanted to shut up flat earthers once and for all, this is how easy it would be. Allow for independent travel south of the South Pole. Or live stream a full south to north circumnavigation of the supposed globe starting in Antarctica and traveling south. Show the world's flat earthers that traveling south of the South Pole will somehow bring you north. At the very least, show us what happens when a plane travels perfectly straight in any direction starting from anywhere on Earth for 48 hours. If Earth is truly a ball 24,900 miles in circumference as we are taught, traveling perfectly straight in any direction starting from anywhere on Earth at an average flight speed of 550 miles per hour, the globe model claims the plane will circumnavigate the entire circumference and return to its original starting point. And it's not just Eric Dubay that said this. So many flat earthers have said this. Here's another example that I just happened to see recently. When you look at the one thing that would prove the globe earth or the one thing that would disprove the flat earth, what is it? I, I don't know. You tell me. It would be a linear flight path, okay? A linear traverse directly down past South America, down to Antarctica, and without breaking that straight linear path, continuing through the continent and back up the other side into the Indian Ocean. Like, this would literally end the debate. It would be the single biggest piece of evidence for the global model. And then Flat Earth Dave, just in the last few weeks, has been saying that airplanes flying around the shoreline of Antarctica would prove whether or not the Earth is a globe or flat. Right? You want to really do something? Instead of freezing your ass off for five days trying to film the sun at midnight, why don't you just fly from Santiago around the edge of Antarctica and go over to Australia? Right? Do that in one day. Why, why, didn't, why does he do that? Right? That would, be, that would be interesting. So this is interesting to me. According to Eric Dubay and Dave Weiss and so many other flat earthers, flying a plane over or around Antarctica can tell us about the ground we live on. And this makes sense. South on a flat earth would never bring you north. But if you go south on the globe far enough, you eventually head north. So I agree with flat earthers that a flight over Antarctica would prove the globe. And I agree that if you flew in a plane south and only got further and further from our known world, that would falsify the globe and prove flat earth. But that just leaves one problem. This proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that flat earthers can comprehend the reality that the movement of objects through the sky can tell us about the ground we live on. Yes, the sun and an airplane are very different, but the point still stands. If something is impossible on a model and that thing happens, the model is falsified. So that leaves us with only two options. Either objects in the sky can inform us as to the earth that we live on, such as the sun or an airplane, or 
Flat Earthers are going to change their mind again on this one, just like they did with the Antarctic 24 hour sun. And they are going to say, planes in the sky can't tell us about the ground we live on. So, Flat Earthers, tell me which one it will be. Are you going to stay consistent and acknowledge that a flight over Antarctica, one that goes south and then ends up traveling north, are you going to continue to acknowledge that such a flight proves we live on a globe and falsifies flat earth? Or are you going to change direction and start saying things like planes in the sky can't tell us about the ground we live on? Let me know in the comments. I'm truly curious.